All right, so a lot of the finishes that you're going to specify will be subject to fire code restrictions, if, especially if you're doing commercial work. Um, wall finishes, um, any sort of a surface that's applied that's fixed or movable, partitions, columns, ceiling finishes, drapery, bedding, all sorts of things. It's important to understand what the word fire rated means. It basically means that a product has been tested to obtain an hourly rating. Most manufacturers will test products before putting them on the market, and as a designer, you can request these results. It's really good to know which materials may be required to be um, regulated by code or need to be tested and that sort of thing. Now there are, there are many tests and I encourage you to read about them in your text, but here's a couple of the most common ones. First is the pill test, and it, it's used to determine the flammability of carpet. There's the radiant panel test, which rates floor finishes including carpeting, resilient flooring, and hardwood floor assemblies. And the room corner test, which is used for vertical treatments like curtains, draperies, window shades, uh, large wall hangings or tapestries, and any sort of vertical uh, treatment that's going to be exposed to air on both sides. And finally, there's a Steiner tunnel test, which determines the flame spread and the smoke development ratings for materials that are applied to walls, ceilings, and other structural elements, uh, especially columns. So it'll rate the surface burning characteristics of interior finishes and um, basically during the test the sample piece is placed in a tunnel chamber that has a controlled flame at one end. Now another thing that's important to know about are smoke development ratings and these are applied to any materials that are going to cover the means of egress. And they're listed on a class A through C basis based on the Steiner tunnel test and the radiant panel test. Now the class A is the strictest rating, class B is the middle and C is the, is the most lax. Okay, so moving on to fire suppression. This is basically an effort to either put fires out or keep them under control and there are several different components that are involved. The purpose of an automatic sprinkler system is to extinguish fires before they get out of control. They consist of a network of pipes at the ceiling level and become active when they detect certain temperatures. Now there are two common types, you can see them here, the pendant and the upright. And sometimes the, uh, the pendant sprinklers can be slightly recessed. There are also sidewall sprinkler heads and those are usually used in small spaces like hotel rooms where you maybe only need one sprinkler head. Check that out next time you go to a hotel. I bet you'll notice that. Stand pipes are water pipes that are, uh, the fire department can attach hoses to. They run vertically through a building. And uh, they're typically required in at least one stairway. Now some buildings house equipment that can be damaged by water, like computer equipment, laboratory equipment, that sort of thing. So there are several non-water systems that will help put out fires or um, stifle the spread of the fire. What you see here is a foam system. There are also systems that use an inert gas or a powder that can be released. Now the main goal of the fire alarm and detection system is um, first to protect lives and seven, second to protect property. There are four stages of fire progression. There's the incipient stage, the smoldering stage, flame, and then heat. Fire detection equipment serves to detect all of these various stages. So depending on the type of fire detection system you put in your house, it may detect fire before the smoke has even started. It could be alerted by heat, so on and so forth. Obviously a smoke detector that's in your living room or your bedroom is set to detect smoke. Now codes require that fire alarm systems be both audio and visual and in large buildings where firefighters may not be able to access the higher floors for some time, the alarm must be a voice alarm that issues specific safety instructions. Each 
required exit must also have a fire alarm that's not more than five feet from the entrance in order to help occupants locate the exit during an emergency. So the one you see here in this picture has a, a flashing light and that's obviously to help people who have who don't hear very well and then it'll also submit a very loud sound. Integrating sa uh, fire safety into a building requires a lot of coordination among the architect, engineers, interior designer, and other members of the design team. It's very important as a designer that you understand the requirements and the things from or the parts of the fire code that will affect your part of the job. That's it for this week. Not bad, right? And like I said, be sure to read through your book because there's a lot of important material in there that I wasn't able to cover in the videos.